Well, hello everyone. Today we're going to do a little work on the uh, mini here. We've got to, I need to, I say we, I'll probably do it, need to drain the hot water tank and get the uh, scale that's built up in that thing done and washed out. And if I can uh, make sure that the inlet uh, valve is working okay for the normally winterizing, I'm going to pump in some vinegar into the hot water tank and get that flushed out and we'll go through those steps as I go. Hopefully that'll work. Let's get this ball rolling and see how much I can get done today and wash the camper. Alright, we're at Walmart. We're going to get us five gallons total of distilled white wine vinegar, or white vinegar, not white wine, and that's going to be used to descale the hot water cleaner. So let's pick up five of those things. Alrighty, we're going to flush this thing out. There's scale down in the, uh, the hot water heater there. So come here just a little bit. I want to show you. This is the, uh, the plug that you're going to need, and it is a, mm, let's see, one and one sixteenth. Now, you can get these at Sears, maybe other stores. Sears carries them. And then you'll want a, an extension. Makes it a lot easier to get in here. And we're going to take off the hot water thing. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to go ahead and release the pressure on the tank because I've drained the hot of the fresh water tank, but just draining the fresh water tank, even using your water pump to drain it as much as possible, you're still going to have six gallons of water in this hot water heater. So it's quite cold. I'm not too worried about getting burned. If your water was hot, you would definitely want to wear protective gloves or just let it cool down. So the water's going to spray out over here. So I'm going to let Linda get on the other side. And now with that pressure released, we're going to get a flow of water out of here to drain this tank. And I want you to notice the scale of the stuff that is coming out up in here. You get a new one, you see the scale. This is what we're after. You can see there's quite a bit here. Not as bad as the first time I did it. But it's definitely bad. I'm going to take off some of that Teflon tape. There we go. And we're going to let that drain completely. Now you notice the anode rod on this. This anode rod is still good. Even though it's pocked up, it's doing its job. That's what it's for. It will go down to maybe even a quarter of an inch on this thing before you want to replace it. I'll keep the old one always for jobs like this. And in this case, I'm going to put it back. But we're going to descale this. So uh, I won't replace this or throw it away. I'm just going to use it to plug that back up when we do our descaling. Yeah, we're gonna, this is the uh, tool we're gonna use for flushing out that tank. So even though we drained it, we're gonna go inside with the water on and we're gonna flush out as much water or as much scale in there as we can. So you're gonna see the scale coming out here, how much more there is, a lot of scale. And we're gonna flush this with water until all that scale comes out. See how big it is? That's why we're doing this. Now those scales are also around the hot water coils on the inside. And this is not enough pressure to get the scale off those. It's crusted around your hot water elements that run up and down inside the hot water heater. So this is not enough pressure to do it even up this way. We need to give it some, although I think some of them are breaking off. 
see these long ones coming out? That may be from some of the elements. Okay. I'm not seeing a lot of new scale come out. So, we're going to call that good. Alrighty, what we're going to do is put some Teflon tape, plumber's tape, back on this. And I'm going to reinsert it back in here. And sometimes it's easier to use your plug to get it started. Sometimes not, because the front end of this is holding that, is dropping like this when you're trying to screw it. It's a little hard to get in. But we're going to put that back in there, and then we're going to go on to the next step. Alrighty, next step, got our five gallons of vinegar out, we've got the anode rod is back in place with some thread, I'm going to leave the relief valve open so this tank will fill. We're going to use the antifreeze inlet. Now for antifreeze you would close the valve to the tank, and let me show you that. These valves are open right now for winter, uh, for summer use. See the top one up here is facing that way. This one is facing that way in line with the hose. This one is closed off. I want this vinegar to go into the tank. And the tank will fill first when I go through the antifreeze inlet. Now to do that, this valve has to be turned this way. This line goes up and it goes to that antifreeze inlet port that I showed you up there. Right now it would go into um, the rest of the system. So we're going to turn that valve off. Alright, so here we go. Let's give this a try. You can see it's Water pump is on, and drawing in. All right, um, started to get some water coming out of the overflow valve, so I shut that. So we now have a mix, about four gallons to one gallon, four gallons of vinegar to one gallon of water. And I've turned my switch here back to normal which is straight up and down. Cleaned out that, by the way. And now I am going to go ahead and run just a little bit of water. Just want to make sure I've got some coming through here. So we'll turn the water pump on. And I'm going to run just a bit of hot water through there to make sure I get a mix. Yep, I can smell some vinegar. Okay, there we go. We got that done. Turn off the water pump and I'm going to turn the water heater on. You'll notice the red light. That's a direct spark ignition fault, which means it's trying to light. I just turned the propane on it has to run a little bit of gas through the line and when you saw it go out that means that it is now lit and it's going to heat up the hot water tank. When that comes up to pretty much a, a hot system, in my case, mine goes about 15 minutes. I'll time it. At that point I'll turn the hot water heater off. I'm going to let it sit for about three or four hours and then I'm going to drain that hot water tank one more time. Okay, we'll see how much flush we get out of that. I guess I could have mentioned it's very obvious when your hot water heater comes up to temperature because you can hear the flame right now. The thermostat will shut it off when it's reached its peak heat. And that will be very soon. At that point, you can turn off 
the hot water heater button on the inside. Good morning guys. Instead of uh, just letting that heat four hours last night, we're going to go somewhere today with the trailer, so I just let it sit overnight. So I'm going to go ahead and take that plug out and get that draining. And before I do that, It really kept its heat very well. These these tanks are well insulated, so even uh, just afternoon heating this up, I have a lot of pressure on that and warm water. It's not real hot, but I'm going to be kind of careful taking that plug out. Okay, I'm just using one hand, so let me set this down for a second here. Now, one thing. Uh, I did want to mention this is coming out pretty frothy, so no big chunks yet. I'll rinse it out in a second. But this is why I keep old rods. Remember what that looked like yesterday? Look how much that vinegar took off of this rod. So I'm going to go ahead and put a new one in. I've got a new one. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. Okay, this is uh, the rod I ordered online. Uh, anode rod and it specifically says suburban and check blah 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 always keep a spare in your RV so this is from Air XL they uh, have a suburban division so I'm gonna go ahead and put the new one in rinse it out first of course I don't want any uh, vinegar doing anything we'll get that done alrighty let's uh I'm doing this one-handed today, so let's see if we can uh, get any scale out of there. vinegar did its job. It really took out, it dissolved all of that scale as you can tell from my uh, from my rod. It really did its job. That's awesome. So I put in actually almost five gallons. I think I said four. So that's uh, descaling your your hot water tank guys. Hope you uh, benefit from that. Oh, by the way, quick way to fill up your hot water tank when you're done. Leave the overflow valve open like that. Connect to your city water. And that will flow right into your hot water tank and fill it up first. So when the water starts coming out, flip your pressure relief valve off. You're done. It's a lot faster than using the water pump.